All right. So let's go back to where we were with um, with primary decomposition because it's been a it's been a minute. Okay. And so oh so we, what we were talking about we were talking about saturation, right? And so we had this like these colon ideals, right? And we just kind of proved some basic properties of the colon ideal, right? And the main point about saturation was that it allows you to like pick out certain components of, of a primary decomposition. Right. So that's the, the main idea. Taylor, I had a question about this. Yeah. I only watched the lecture afterwards from last Friday, trying mm -hmm. to get my head around this saturation thing. So these colon ideals contain our original ideal. Yeah. OK. So is it only in this like picture of this variety then that it looks like deletion? Yeah, it's the opposite. So like the the larger an ideal is, right? The smaller the set. That okay, that's what I was trying. So the to larger say. the ideal is, the more constraints you are imposing, right? So you right. should think of it as like I'm 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 adding more equations to this thing, right? And so the more equations that I add, right? the smaller the set that's going to be cut out is until you get to the point where it's a maximal ideal, the biggest possible system of equations that you can have. Mm -hmm. Right. And that just describes a point. This is helping me put together this like deeper image. All right. Thank you. That was like my main question while I was watching that. Cause yeah. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of like the same sort of thinking where like, in analysis where you divide by something small and it gets big, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. that's something that you have to get like really good at with the calls, you know, like, okay, I'm dividing by something small. So it gets big and then whatever. It's the same kind of the same thing It's like more constraints you have, the smaller the, the scheme or the geometric picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So we had the saturation operation and there's, there's this, distinction between a Q and, and, you know, the idea was that if um, you don't take an element of P, then then and you saturate with, or you take the colon ideal with respect to X, or you divide by X, you get the, the thing back. Um, all right. Um, we proved that. And we did an example of saturation here. Um, uh, the intersection, so we did this colon ideal intersection thing. Okay, and then we defined saturation. So saturation was like a bunch of, of colon ideals like this. And um, and it, it was also the operation that you get where you you kind of stick your ideal into a localization and then take the inverse image, right? And when you do that, you're saturating with respect to the multiplicative set. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so let's continue now. Um, so what did I want to prove? Um, so, uh, so I have some uniqueness stuff and I have, um, so let's, let's, so, so we have, so we have existence and uniqueness issues that we need to address still. Um, okay. So let's do the first uniqueness theorem. Okay. So let's do the first, so let's do the first uniqueness theorem. for primary decompositions. Okay, so the theorem says, so let's let, let's go back. I'm going to go back a little bit too and I'm going to uh, uh, we're going to recall what a primary decomposition was. So, well let me just say in words and then I'll show you again. So, a primary decomposition was an expression of an ideal as a finite intersection of prime ideals, okay? Uh, sorry, not prime ideals, primary ideals, okay? And, um, and, and it had the property that they were irredundant, meaning that the, the complement of all of them, of one of them and the, all of the other ones is not empty, okay? So, so let me go back to here. So where is our, where's our definition of primary decomposition? So here it is, right? So, uh, so it's the intersection of, of 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 primary ideals, 
and um, uh, and the there's this irredundancy condition, you know, that the complement of one of them and the others is not empty. Okay, that's equivalent to what I was said that I, what I wrote down there. I claim. Okay, so um, so let's do uh, so let's do this. So so the theorem that we want to prove. Okay, so the uh, so so given so let's say the the associated primes of a primary decomposition are unique. Again, we had the associated prime ideals and the associated primary ideals. So the, the primary ideals are like the nilpotent thickenings of the prime ideals, right? And they're, they're, they're called associated if they appear. Um, so, so primary ideals are called associated if they appear in a primary decomposition. And prime ideals are called associated if um, the radical of one of those primary ideals is, is that prime, OK? So um, so let's 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 start. Let's give a definition. So before giving the proof, um, uh, let's give a definition. So and then, and then uh, let me just say the so for like a spoiler, right? So um, or like for the existence theorem. So by the way, so primary decompositions exist for Noetherian rings. So we're just going to assume primary decompositions exist for now, and then we're going to work on the uniqueness. I mean, they are unique, unique. Only this is about the primes are unique, not the not the primary ideals. So um, so uh, primary de decompositions exist for Noetherian rings. Okay. So we'll we'll prove this later. Okay. So let me let me get going on this. So definition uh, on the the uniqueness of of the the associated primes. So uh, let's and I'm going to kind of give an ad hoc definition here because I needed to prove something. So a minimal uh, prime decomposition of a radical ideal I. So this is the radical of I is an intersection I is P1. So we this is the like the first theorem we proved in class that radical ideals looked like this. PR, where the PI are minimal. among uh, chains of primes minimal in in uh, in chains of prime ideals containing i okay and so this this condition here Right, this implies two things. One, that PI is not a subset of PJ for I not equal to J. Right, and two, uh, for each I, uh, there is no prime, prime ideal, P prime with PI. I don't know what we want to call this. Um, let's do call it P tilde. P tilde with um, I contained in P tilde contained in not equal to PI. OK, so um, so what it's saying is that, you know, these are really the, the, the lowest you can get. OK, Th these are uh, as close to I as you can get. We're not like throwing in extra prime ideals here. OK. So the lemma is that uh, uh, so so the claim that I have so the the claim 
but let's do, use this fact. Um, so the minimal prime decompositions. are unique in Notharian rings. Okay, and this is, uh, this goes back to the first class, like the very early, so this is the very early stuff we did in the class. So this is, stuff about radical ideals. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, okay. So, so lemma. Okay. If P is his prime, if P is prime, uh, it is its own uh, minimal. So, prime ideals are always radical. Just remember that. Um, it's its own minimal uh, prime decomposition. Okay, so uh, proof. Well, it's clearly above itself. So P is contained in P. So, uh, so letting you know, P1 is equal to P gives a prime decomposition. A minimal prime decomposition. And then, um, uh, and so by uniqueness, we are done. Okay, so um, uh, there we go. So, so this is it. so P is its own prime decomposition. All right. So now uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove what, what I wanted to prove. Okay. So now I'm gonna prove the, the theorem that the associated primes are, you know, they're they're independent of the primary decomposition. Okay. Okay. So um, so theorem. Um. Okay, so the, let's do the proof of the theorem. Oh, proof. Wait, Taylor, can I ask a question quick? Yeah. Did you just say that the these primes are independent of the primary decomposition? I thought they were unique by the. Um. Uh. So they're unique. Yeah. So so in particular, the primary decomposition. Okay. So so um. So a primary decomposition is not unique. Right. right? But a prime decomposition of a radical ideal is unique. So it's difference between prime and primary. Okay, and um, and and for these ones, so for for prime decompositions, um, they are. Um, uh, so what was I going to say? So so for prime decompositions, you don't have any of this embedded primes business, right? And so that's kind of what we're worried about. Okay. 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 So um, what's going on here? No. All right. So what we're going to do is is so so what we're going to do is we're going to let uh, I be Q1 intersect Q2 intersect dot 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 intersect QN uh, be a primary decomposition. And we're going to let uh, PI be the radical of QI, uh, be the associated primes. So what we're going to show is we will prove, prove the equality of sets. We'll prove that uh, here P1, P2, through Pn. So this is going to be equal to the set of prime ideals uh, 
of the form um, here, square root of I, sorry, the, the radical of this colon ideal for, uh, for X in the ring A. Okay, so, so here we're gonna say, so let, uh, so here we're gonna say, let I be an ideal in the ring A. This is a ring, okay? Uh, so we're gonna have I an ideal in a, in, and we're gonna let this be a primary decomposition. And then we just give names to everything, okay? And so note what, what, what this says is, so note that this thing here, this part makes no reference to the given given primary decomposition. And, and, and so hence is independent. of the primary decomposition. So no matter what primary decomposition you write down, the associated prime ideals are going to be, so these are the associated prime ideals. By definition, they're the radicals of the primary ideals appearing in a prime de primary decomposition. So we're showing that the associated prime ideals have this other description as, as this thing. Okay, so uh, let's do the, uh, so, so here's the, here's the, uh, here's the proof, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, uh, so, so we're going to let, okay, so we have this. So let's show that, um, uh, so we're going to show this containment. So we will show, should, should we give this thing a name? Uh, what do we want to call this? Someone give me a name. Omega. There we go, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we will show, uh, show uh, PJ is in Omega. Okay, so this is the first part. Okay, and then we're going to show then conversely that those are in there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll let um, so let so let uh, x j be in the intersection of i not equal to j of q i uh, minus q j. Okay, so this makes sense whether I put the parentheses here or not here. So I don't know where you want to do it. So oh. Okay, so let's do it like this. Okay, um, and so what we'll do is, um, uh, so then uh, XJ uh, is in a QI, is in is an element of QI for I not equal to J. And, you know, XJ is not an element of QJ. Okay, and now what we'll do is we take the colon ideal. Right, so we do I colon XJ. So this is uh, the intersection over I's. Uh, so let's say I is equal to one up to N of uh, QI colon XJ. And then now we use the way that, that, that these colon ideals distribute. So we did some work there. Okay, and now we just get that this is equal to QJ XJ. Because remember, if we did the colon ideal, if we divided by something that was a member of the ideal, then it just became the unit ideal. Okay, so we also proved that this from the that other class. Um, so we proved. So we proved that this is. We proved uh, these are PJ primary from uh, from a previous class. Okay, so this implies that if we take the radical of both sides, 
that the radical of this thing is the radical of this thing. And by PJ primariness, this is PJ. Okay, so this proves, so this proves that pj is in omega because this was exactly what omega was it was it was the, so omega was the, the 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 things of this form okay so now it remains to show the converse right that um that every one of these right is contained in here okay primary prime ideals of the form blah okay so let's show Let's show that omega is contained in P1, P2, blah, 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 to Pn. So that all of these prime ideals of the form blah are, are, uh, are, are primary, are, are associated. Okay, so we already showed that, showed that every associated uh, uh, prime ideal was in there, but now we need to show this one. So I guess we had this step, where, where was it? Okay, so we'll show this part, and then now we're going to show this part. Okay, so um, all right. So what we'll do is so so suppose that um, this thing here is prime. Okay, and we need to show we need to show that this is. This is uh, one of the PJs. Okay, so I is so so we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to use the properties of of the colon thing that we worked hard on. So we have I is equal to one up to n of QJ colon X. We're going to do this. So we have this, and then um, we're going to take the radical. Well, okay, so let's do, let's just write this down. So this is the intersection of I not equal to one of N of, okay, QJ colon X. And then this is, I guess, the, the, um, the intersection where X is not an element of QJ. Wait, why I not equal to one? Uh, sorry, not, a, that's, 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 uh, that's, that's, that's not, that's not right. You're you're you always catch me. That's good. Um, uh, yeah, so it's supposed to be one. Yeah, you're like <laughs> everything was making sense up until uh, <laughs> <laughs> you did something <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, but it's good because it was ridiculous. I was a typo. Okay, so um, all right, so now we just take the radical of everything. Right, so this is this is what we had over here. So this is oh, this doodad is um, here. This is the radical, like that. Okay, this is the radical. Oh man. Okay, there we go. This is the ra radical of this, and um, and so radicals distribute. Oh. So I guess this is the radical of this, maybe because we did a simplification first, and then let's do one more. X naught and QJ. So this is the radical of this. Okay, and then this is equal to uh, X naught and QJ, uh, PJ. Okay, so this is some um, uh, combination of these. Okay, and now, uh, what we're going to use is that this is so so this can be made okay so this thing this part here by throwing away away uh, some of the uh, some of the larger let's say the non-minimal the non-minimal primes here left over uh, this is a this this can be made into a primary decomposition or minimal prime decomposition 
And that should still be X not in QJ, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be some of these, some of the J's are going to be, some of them are going to be maximal, or are going to be contain or going to contain some of the other ones. So some of them are going to be nested. Like in this example here, right, where you have like an embedded prime, right, you're going to have like P1, which is this thing, P2 here, and then P3. And then in this case, P2 is going to contain P1. One, so it, it turns out that P1 intersect P2 intersect P3. This is not a minimal one. Uh, this is just the same thing as a P1 uh, intersect P2. Okay, so this is I'm just writing down the primes uh, for for the for so I didn't write down the primary ideals. So this is for just primes. So you could have something like this, right, where you're throwing away this uh, embedded component. Because it's embedded, but now you don't have any fuzz since I took radicals. And so it's, it's you know, embedded primes without fuzz is, is worthless. Okay. But, okay, so now we're just, let me just finish this. So this, this thing is prime. This is prime. And Taylor, I want to, we don't need, we, we started by supposing that it, was prime, but because this is the radical of an ideal, it is prime. No, 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 no. Radicals of ideals are in general intersections of primes. Intersections of primes. Oh, okay. Right. So sure they're, they're kind of like particular. they're kind of like the first step of a primary decomposition. They're intersections of primes. Yeah. Okay. They have no embedded components. They just are isolated components. And, okay. and they're not primary. They're I mean they are primary, but they're in particular they're prime prime. You know, they're yeah. They're uh, they're not just they don't have no potents or anything like this. The quotients okay. don't have no potents. Yeah. And so okay, but um so but the here's the last part, but by uniqueness of minimal minimal prime decompositions. We must have that the square root of I X equals P J P J for some J. Oh, this should be, uh, sorry. Yeah. You, this is what you were saying here. Uh, Liam, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's my bad. I didn't understand what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For some, yeah. For some J. Yeah, man, I'm really bad sometimes. Okay, uh, yeah, so that's that's right. This is not contained in. Okay, so uh, yeah, and that that completes the proof, right? So we showed that it has to be one of these PJs. Okay, so we, in, in particular, we showed that this thing has to have uh, length one, right? I mean, not length one. It has to have only one term in it, right? right. So there will be a unique like unique term in here. So it would actually be like, yeah, huh? So like, the, like how I am under, if I'm understanding this right, like we could have had more stuff, but it, they're not minimal, so we've thrown them all out, and so we're just left with one. Yeah. So first of all, you throw away. So so okay. If I didn't make any assumptions about this thing being a prime ideal, right? Then at this stage, you you would still throw away some stuff that that wasn't minimal, right? But we get to even we, we know that this 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 uh, this thing is the intersection of actually just one ideal because it is a minimal prime decomposition and because minimal prime decompositions of prime ideals are just the, the ideal itself. OK, I get so like my phase one. You get rid of the embedded stuff. Right? right. And then by the assumption that it's prime, right, means that this has to be one prime. Cool. Can I ask why, and I might be missing something totally now, why are we allowed to assume that that radical is prime? That's part of the assumption. That was baked into the hypothesis. Oh, that so was. Suppose that. that this was prime. And so the claim, again, was that 
these associated primes here, so these ones here, are the prime ideals of the form oh. radical blah. It's not that it's not that all of these ideals of the form radical blah are prime. We're only looking at the prime ones. That was the that was indeed the set. Okay, that's yeah. what I needed. I was I missed that piece. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's helpful. I when as soon as you wrote that down, I was like, I have to ask about this because I have no idea why he gets to just say that that's prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's part of the it's part of the the claim. Yeah, yeah, it's because I wasn't paying attention. That's, that's no, 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 no. It's it's fine. You know, like yeah, these are good questions. Thanks for asking. Okay, so I'm gonna be here. Uh, we're a little over time, but thanks for your patience, and um, I'll be here if you guys have any questions. All right, thanks, Taylor. You're welcome. Thank you.